Today, we're going to talk about Bluetooth proxies. What happens if you have your Home Assistant instance in a back closet of the backest part of your house? Well, you're not going to get Bluetooth out to everything that you need. So with Bluetooth proxies, such as an ESP32 board or something else like that, you're able to get those Bluetooth signals back into your Home Assistant instance, regardless of where that instance is actually sitting. So today we're going to play around with it and get a little bit of an overview of what the proxies are and how you can set one up with an ESP32 board. So before we get started doing the actual work of creating a proxy and using it, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. In the last release, which was 2022.8, um, Home Assistant introduced Bluetooth integration. That was the first step in what's going on now, which is the support for multiple Bluetooth, Bluetooth adapters and ESP home devices acting as Bluetooth proxies. So why do you need a Bluetooth proxy? Well, this picture kind of sums it up for us. If we take a look here, we look at this house. If your home assistant instance is down here in the basement and you have something up here that's Bluetooth enabled, it's very unlikely that the distance between here and all of these floors will allow you to connect directly to home assistant. So the way you do that is you throw in a couple of Bluetooth proxies and they show those here. Bluetooth, believe it or not, will go through floors. In fact, my farthest away device is in the garage and it actually works from where I'm at here, which is about, it's two floors and about five walls between here and there. So it will work, but for reliability and for those areas where it won't work, you throw in a proxy for guaranteed coverage. So that's what's going on with the Bluetooth proxies and why you need them. Uh, one of the biggest uses of this is uh, temperature sensors and stuff like that, where you have a sensor that's broadcasting a temperature or humidity or something else. Again, far, far away from where your Home Assistant instance is. You want to be able to pick that signal up and bring it into Home Assistant. And that's what we're doing here with the proxies. So all you have to do to get a proxy up and running is to go over to the Bluetooth proxy installer website, which is this website right here. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. Uh, you can install the proxy uh, directly from your browser on some supported devices. Now, these proxies are limited to passive data. Now, what is passive data versus active data? Passive data means that the device, such as a thermometer or something like that, is sending out a beacon with data every so often. The Home Assistant proxies currently will listen for that data and send it back to Home Assistant. What it's not doing is an active connection. And an active connection is when you would send out a query to a device to get more information from that device. That is currently not supported in this version of the Home Assistant proxy. However, as noted on their site here, that is something that will be coming in a future release. So then you can actually query devices and pick up more information from those devices. So the integrations that are using the proxy will already do this stuff regardless of which way it's set up. All you have to do is just install the proxy. So once they get the active connections going, we'll have, you'll be able to use those right away. Most integrations now support using the adapter with the best signal to connect devices that need an active connection. So extension cables, USB Ethernet extenders, or USB IP coupled with an additional Bluetooth adapter can significantly extend your active connection range. So in addition to all of that, of course, we talked about this in the release video a while back. BT Home is now available in Home Assistant. Anything that has a BT Home packet will be automatically discovered by Home Assistant. And those devices typically can, typically can run over a year on a single battery. Okay, so let's talk about what I'm going to do today. So today we're gonna to use a US, uh, ESP32 board, and you can find the link to this stuff on my website. It's an affiliate link, if I can get that to focus. Come on, you can do it. This is just an ESP board that has Bluetooth capability and Wi-Fi capability. It's got a little more to it than just uh, that, but it is a board that we're gonna to use today. And I'm gonna plug that in to just into my PC using just a standard USB cable. We'll do that there. And so now it's powered up. You can see the little light on there. And we're going to leave it alone. We don't have to touch it or do anything else with it. We're going to do everything else in the actual software. So if we go over here and we talked about this Bluetooth proxy page, this is where you actually install the software onto an ESP board. And you have three different choices currently. There are some choices that are available that require you to do a bit more. 
uh, hands-on with the actual device or the hardware to make it work. So these are the easiest to use right now, the generic ESP32, which is what I just showed you. There is an M5 stack that's available. It's an ESP32 board that has a case on it and a little USB adapter right there. And then this is the Olamex ESP32 powered over ethernet. This is a PoE powered device. Uh, this one also will allow you to do a Bluetooth proxy. We're gonna stick with the generic ESP32 today. And I'm gonna just click on the connect button here. It's gonna ask me if I wanna to connect to it. And I'm gonna choose the COM port that it's currently connected to. Connect it right here. It's gonna find it. And then it's gonna ask me what I wanna do. Well, today I'm gonna to install an ESP32 generic uh, on here. It erases everything on the board. So if this is a board you're doing something else with, you may not wanna go this route. There is a way to install this without going this way. We're gonna do a fresh install. So we'll click that. It'll take a couple of minutes for that to occur. And while it's doing that, we will step aside and then we'll come back when it's all finished. While that is installing, let's just take a minute. If you can, while you're waiting, go over to my YouTube channel or you're on my YouTube channel, but hit that subscribe button down below. And if you're not a channel member, uh, please join the channel. I help support what I do here as well. And there's other ways to support me. I have a website uh, that you can find in the description down below as well to see what other things I'm doing and all that jazz. So let's see what's going on over here. We're at 95% installed, uh, almost done. So now it's wrapping it up and the installation is complete. All right, so that's step one. It has now installed generic ESP32 firmware on your device. So we'll click on next. You're gonna set up a Wi-Fi network for this particular type of board. If you're using a PoE powered or something else, this is a little different. But for the ESP32 boards, I'm gonna connect this to my Wi-Fi network. So we'll connect connect it there and get it all set up. Now the device is connected to the network and it's gonna ask me to add it to Home Assistant. So I'm gonna click on that button next and it's gonna do the My Home Assistant link. So my.homeassistant.io is where it's gonna go. Whatever you have connected in this URL or set up in this URL right here is the device it's gonna to go to, the instance. So if you're doing more than one instance, make sure you edit this to the instance you wanna connect this device to. And I will click on open link here. Do I wanna set up ESP Home? The answer is okay, yes I do. I've run into this a couple times where it's asking me for the IP address of the node. So I believe I know that, so we're gonna try it. If you don't know the IP address of the node, and it doesn't always ask this, but for some, some cases it does, you'll have to go to your router and you'll have to figure out which device it's actually connecting to or what IP address it is. So in, in my case, this is 209. So we put 209 here and I'll submit it. And now it says it's already configured. The reason why is I've already messed with this before uh, when I was playing around with it. So you will not see that. You will probably see it say that it got configured. In any case, a successful message is a successful message regardless of how you've done this. All right, so now we can go over to ESP Home and take a look at ESP Home. This assumes you have ESP Home installed on your uh, Home Assistant instance. You can see here that this is the ESP32 Bluetooth Proxy 01084, which I guess is the MAC address of it. Um, yes, that's the MAC address of this particular device. So now what I wanna do is adopt it. Adopting the ESP32 will create an ESP Home configuration for this device. So I'll put it on here in, under ESP Home. This is a way for you to install updates and customize the firmware. It will be configured to connect to the Wi-Fi network stored in your secrets, which is up in here. So what it's basically gonna do is gonna configure it so that you can control it and manage it through ESP Home. That is not absolutely always necessary, but in my case, I want to do that so I can, can have an overview of all my ESP devices. So I'll click on Adopt. And now it needs to uh, finish creating the installation uh, on the device. And we'll do this wirelessly since it's already connected to the wireless network. And you can see that it's compiling here and getting everything ready. The time it takes to do this will depend on how many packages that need to be compiled, uh, how many times you've done this before on this particular device or on ESP Home, if it already has everything it needs, it will just go ahead and uh, prepare it and upload it to your device. And then it'll try to connect to it once it's all done. And if you have a successful connection, you'll see this information here where you have a Wi-Fi signal and all of the rest of it that goes on with it. So essentially you're done now. Uh, you're also connected to Home Assistant here. So you can go ahead and stop that. And now you have 
a proxy up and running. So what you do next depends on what you're going to do with this. Now, I'm going to use a few of these uh, me thermometers. And these are the ones that broadcast out passively temperature and humidity. And this is what I'm going to do uh, in three different locations in my house. I've got these really cheap thermometers. I'm using these right here. And then this Bluetooth setup that I have, this proxy allows me to put a couple of these ESP boards strategically around the house. And no matter which board picks up the signal from the ESP or from the thermometer, it's going to send that proxy it through to Home Assistant. So I can basically almost create what, what I consider a little mesh network of receivers for uh, Bluetooth and have that get back into Home Assistant so I can action on those things. And once you have that mesh network or that thing up and running, it should start to auto discover those devices as soon as it sees a packet from one of your thermometers or any other Bluetooth device. And it may take some time. It may not be instantaneous. It really depends on how often those packets are sent out. Once it sees that, it should start picking up those. And Home Assistant, if it knows about what that device is, will start to be able to put those into auto discovery and you'll be able to work with those. Those thermometers that I'm talking about, there is an integration now for Xiaomi thermometers that allows it to detect those. So as soon as those start sending packets, it should show up as an item or an entity in Home Assistant. Now, if for some reason it doesn't discover these things automatically, you can try to force it. So I'm gonna go over here to my integrations again. If you saw anything come up uh, that would be just auto discovered, you'd see the notifications here. But because I don't, I'm gonna do a little trick here and we'll see if we can get this to work. We're going to go to integrations and I'm going to add an integration by clicking this button down here. And I'm going to click on or search for Xiaomi and it's the BLE here. And I'm going to choose a device to set up and I've got two showing up here. So one is my, well, there are two different th thermometers. So I'm going to click one. And I think this one is down in that room there. And I'm going to add another one, which is another Xiaomi BLE. And it's the other sensor. I'm gonna click on that. And I believe that one is, uh, let's just call that one Studio, possibly. And now you have two devices. Uh, here is a temperature and humidity of one of my Xiaomi's. And this is coming in via the BLE, this device right here, which you can barely see. It's coming in via um, this BLE sensor or this uh, proxy. So this is plugged into the computer, but it's all of it's, it's just for power. Everything else is going from BLE Bluetooth from those thermometers into uh, the Wi-Fi, my Wi-Fi, and then into Home Assistant that way. And you can already see it's doing some more updates here. I've got the battery voltage, the temperature, battery percentage, and the humidity on this one. And we can go back over here and look at this other one as well. And this also has the humidity and temperature. And when it updates the battery percentage and the, the battery voltage, it'll show up here as well. And again, all of those are coming from just a single, you probably didn't see any of that, did you? Let me do this again. Okay, so this one is my second one and it shows humidity 44.3%, temperature 79.7. And again, this is all coming in via this little um, BLE sensor right here and going into Home Assistant. So as soon as you have your gateway set up, all you have to do then is find any BLE devices that you wanna be able to integrate into Home Assistant. If they have an integration, a Bluetooth integration, uh, and if they are even if they are not auto-discovered, you can go into integrations like I just showed you, and you can set those up through um, this little integrations, add integrations button. So. Uh, I don't know what other stuff is even out there. Uh, there's just all kinds of different things that might be able to be added directly through the integration. So what I did though, is I did ask a few of you, I said, what do you think, um, this is a really short time ago, so you, not a lot of time to answer, but I said, what would you do with this uh, BLE? Uh, or what are the use cases for this BLE proxy or Bluetooth proxy? And there is a Serta motion signature bed that this person's talking about. And then this one, this person says um, sp sprinkler controllers. So if your home assistant's on the far side of where your sprinkler controllers are, then you're going to have a, likely have some issues with that. Now, sprinkler controllers may need to be more active than passive, but each device will depend on how you have that set up. 
So that is a very, very quick overview of Bluetooth proxies. It also it shows you how simple it is to set it up. The steps are simple. Get an ESP board or one of those other things that I showed you, and then flash it with ESP, configure um, the Wi-Fi on it, and then put it somewhere where it can passively pick up the uh, Bluetooth signals. And then from there, you can start doing all kinds of stuff with it. I hope that was helpful and uh, shows you a little bit about that. I'm sure there's going to be more to come on these, especially when we start talking about active versus passive Bluetooth. And um, I'm curious what your use cases would be for this. If you have a use case for these uh, Bluetooth proxies, uh, drop that down in the comments down below. I'd like to read it, I'd like everyone else to read it, because this is a new kind of uh, fun technology. Bluetooth itself is not, but extending Bluetooth out to be able to do more things in a smart home makes it more useful as of right now you have to be very close to your bluetooth box or hub in order for it to really do any good and now you can really do all kinds of stuff with it so again let me know in the comments what you think you might want to do with this let me know if you have any questions i'm also on discord uh, again if you want to support me uh, join the channel uh, and uh, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video